Scientists are preparing to do something unprecedented, drill directly into an active volcano's magma chamber. The target is Krofla, a highly active volcano in northeastern Iceland. In 2026, drilling will begin with the goal of reaching the magma chamber 1.2 miles beneath the surface. If successful, this will mark the first time in human history that scientists have directly accessed and measured conditions inside an active magma chamber. Iceland sits atop the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates are slowly pulling apart. This unique geological position makes Iceland one of the most volcanically active regions on Earth. The island itself is a product of millions of years of volcanic activity, a living laboratory of geological processes that elsewhere remain hidden deep underground. The plate boundary runs right through Iceland. As the plates separate at about 2 centimeters per year, magma from the Earth's mantle rises to fill the gap. This process, called seafloor spreading, created Iceland and continues to shape it today. You can literally see the rift valleys where the plates are pulling apart, and even swim or snorkel between the continental plates at sites like Silfra. This geological activity has profound effects on daily life in Iceland. Hot springs dot the landscape. Geysers shoot boiling water into the air. Underground heat warms swimming pools and homes throughout the winter. The famous Blue Lagoon Spa exists only because a geothermal power plant releases its mineral-rich wastewater into a lava field, creating a warm, milky blue pool that has become one of Iceland's most popular attractions. Iceland has no trees to speak of, they were mostly cleared by early settlers, but it has something far more valuable, an enormous reservoir of geothermal energy. Heat from magma chambers beneath the island is close enough to the surface that it can be readily accessed and converted into electricity. This makes Iceland uniquely suited for geothermal experimentation on a scale impossible almost anywhere else on Earth. Krofla isn't just any volcano. Between 1975 and 1984, it erupted nine times, making it one of Iceland's most active volcanic systems. This frequent activity proved invaluable to scientists. Each eruption generated seismic waves that traveled through the Earth's crust. By analyzing these waves from multiple monitoring stations, researchers were able to triangulate the precise location and size of Krofla's magma chamber. They discovered that the chamber sits approximately 1.2 miles below the caldera, shallow enough to potentially reach with current drilling technology, yet deep enough to present serious engineering challenges. The chamber contains magma at temperatures exceeding 900 degrees Celsius, 1,650 degrees Fahrenheit, under immense pressure from the rock above. Since the late 1970s, Iceland's state power company Landsvirgin has operated a geothermal plant at Krofla with 33 boreholes extracting heat from hot rock and steam. These wells tap into superheated water and steam trapped in fractured rock at depths of 1,000 to 2,000 meters. But none reach the magma chamber itself. That's about to change. In 2008, drillers at Krofla accidentally achieved what scientists are now trying to do intentionally. While drilling what was meant to be a standard geothermal well to 4,000 meters depth, the drill bit unexpectedly plunged downward 100 meters at around 2,100 meters depth. The drilling team had inadvertently punched through into a magma chamber. When they retracted the drill, they found the borehole blocked by obsidian, volcanic glass that forms when magma cools rapidly. What had happened was clear. Molten rock had rushed into the borehole, then quickly solidified as it encountered cooler conditions, effectively sealing itself off. This accidental discovery proved two critical things. First, the magma chamber was shallower than expected, accessible at just over 2,000 meters rather than 4,000 meters. Second, drilling into magma was possible without triggering a catastrophic eruption. The magma simply flowed in and sealed itself off. Even more remarkably, the well, dubbed IDDP-1, Iceland Deep Drilling Project, Well 1, became functional despite the magma intrusion. The rock surrounding the magma stayed hot enough that the well could still generate superheated steam. In fact, it produced the hottest geothermal fluid ever recorded, 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit, at 340 bar pressure. This wasn't just supercritical water, it was a new frontier in geothermal energy. For two years, IDDP-1 produced 36 megawatts of power, roughly seven times more than a typical geothermal well. This single accidental magma encounter demonstrated the extraordinary potential of what scientists now call supercritical geothermal energy. Drilling into a magma chamber presents extreme engineering challenges. Conventional drill bits are made of steel and tungsten carbide, 
materials that would simply melt when they contact magma at 900 to 1200 degrees Celsius. The drill string itself, the long pipe connecting the drill bit to the surface, would fail under such conditions. The solution is counterintuitive. Use the magma against itself. The plan is to drill conservatively, allowing magma to flow into the bottom of the borehole where it will cool and solidify, forming a protective sock of glassy rock. This hardened layer protects the equipment from direct contact with molten rock while still allowing heat transfer. By carefully controlling the rate of drilling and cooling, engineers believe they can create a stable interface between the borehole and the magma chamber. Water will play a crucial role. Pumping cool water down the borehole will help solidify the magma at the interface while beginning to establish the circulation system needed for energy production. Once the borehole is established, Cold water pumped down will be heated to supercritical conditions by the magma, then returned to the surface as an incredibly energy-dense fluid. Specialized drilling equipment has been developed for this project. The drill bits are designed to handle extreme temperatures for brief periods. The borehole casing, the steel pipe that lines the hole, uses special high-temperature alloys. Sensors will continuously monitor temperature, pressure, and gas composition to detect any dangerous conditions before they become critical. The obvious concern is whether drilling could trigger an eruption. Volcanoes erupt when pressure in the magma chamber becomes too great, forcing magma upward through cracks and fissures until it reaches the surface. Could a borehole provide such a pathway? The physics of volcanic eruptions provides some reassurance. Eruptions are driven primarily by dissolved gases in the magma, mainly water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide. As magma rises and pressure decreases, these gases come out of solution and expand, much like opening a shaken bottle of soda. This gas expansion can create explosive eruptions that shatter magma into ash and hurl it miles into the atmosphere. Krofla's magma is relatively gas-poor compared to more dangerous volcanoes. It's also been sitting in its chamber for a long time, allowing gases to gradually escape through the surrounding rock. This makes it much less likely to erupt violently even if disturbed. The 2008 accidental drilling incident supports this. The magma simply flowed into the hole and solidified without causing an eruption. Additionally, the borehole itself is tiny compared to the magma chamber. A typical borehole is about 20 centimeters, 8 inches, in diameter, while the magma chamber is hundreds of meters across and contains millions of cubic meters of molten rock. The borehole represents a pinprick, not a release valve. Even if magma flows into it, the volume is negligible compared to the chamber's total contents. That said, the risk isn't zero. Unexpected high-pressure zones or gas pockets could cause problems. This is why the drilling will proceed slowly and carefully, with constant monitoring. If dangerous conditions develop, drilling can be stopped immediately. To understand why scientists are so careful, it's worth considering what can go wrong with volcanoes. Volcanic ash clouds, in particular, pose serious dangers that extend far beyond the eruption site. In 2010, Ajif Geological Volcano in Iceland erupted, sending an ash plume 9 kilometers, 30,000 feet, into the atmosphere. The microscopic glass particles in volcanic ash can destroy aircraft engines. When ash enters a jet turbine, it melts in the engine's extreme heat, then solidifies on cooler turbine blades, blocking airflow and causing engine failure. European aviation authorities shut down airspace across much of the continent for six days, affecting 10 million travelers and costing airlines an estimated $1.7 billion. An even more dramatic incident occurred in 1982 when British Airways Flight 9 flew through an ash cloud from Indonesia's Mount Galungang at night. All four engines failed. The plane descended from 37,000 feet to 12,000 feet before pilots managed to restart the engines and make an emergency landing in Jakarta. The 263 passengers and crew survived, but the incident highlighted how invisible ash clouds can be, especially at night. On geological timescales, volcanoes have caused catastrophes that dwarf anything in human history. The Siberian Traps eruptions 252 million years ago released enough volcanic material to cover an area the size of Europe. The resulting climate disruption caused the Permian-Triassic extinction event, which killed an estimated 90% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrates. It was the closest life on Earth has come to complete annihilation. Fortunately, Krofla poses minimal risk of such disasters. Its magma is basaltic, relatively fluid and gas-poor, making explosive eruptions unlikely. When Krofla erupts, 
It typically produces lava flows rather than ash clouds. These flows are dangerous to nearby areas but don't threaten global climate or aviation. The real prize of this project isn't just understanding magma chambers, it's the energy potential. Supercritical geothermal energy could transform how we generate electricity. Normal geothermal power works by drilling into hot rock formations where water has collected in cracks and pores. This water, heated to 150 to 350 degrees Celsius, is brought to the surface as steam to drive turbines. A typical geothermal well might produce 5 megawatts of electricity, enough to power about 5,000 homes. Supercritical geothermal energy operates at a fundamentally different level. Water becomes supercritical above 374 degrees Celsius and 221 bar pressure. In this state, it exists in a bizarre phase that's neither fully liquid nor fully gas. It has properties of both simultaneously. Supercritical water can dissolve minerals like a liquid but expand and flow like a gas. Most importantly, it can carry far more heat energy per unit volume than regular steam. A supercritical geothermal well tapping into conditions near a magma chamber can produce 50 megawatts or more, 10 times the output of a conventional geothermal well. This dramatically changes the economics. Instead of drilling dozens of wells to power a city, you might need only a handful of supercritical wells. The IDDP, one well at Krofla, despite being an accident, demonstrated this potential. Before it was shut down in 2012 due to equipment issues, it produced 36 megawatts from a single well, at the time, the highest power output from any geothermal well in the world. If supercritical geothermal technology can be perfected and scaled up, the implications for global energy are profound. Geothermal energy has several advantages over other renewable sources. Unlike solar and wind, geothermal runs 24-7 regardless of weather. It's always hot inside the earth. A geothermal plant occupies far less land than equivalent solar or wind installations. Geothermal wells can operate for decades with minimal maintenance. Geothermal energy uses domestic resources, improving energy security. The world's current geothermal capacity is about 16 gigawatts, less than 1% of global electricity generation. Most of this comes from conventional geothermal systems in volcanic regions of the U.S., Indonesia, Philippines, Iceland, New Zealand, and a handful of other countries. Supercritical geothermal could expand this dramatically. Even conservative estimates suggest accessible supercritical resources could provide thousands of gigawatts globally, potentially 10 to 20 percent of worldwide electricity demand. This could displace a significant portion of fossil fuel generation. The technology could also enable geothermal energy in new locations. Currently, geothermal is limited to volcanic regions and tectonic plate boundaries where heat is naturally close to the surface. Advanced drilling techniques developed for supercritical systems could eventually tap deeper heat sources in non-volcanic areas, though this remains speculative. One often overlooked benefit of geothermal energy is workforce compatibility. The oil and gas industry employs millions of workers with specialized skills in drilling, reservoir engineering, well maintenance, and related fields. As the world transitions away from fossil fuels, these workers face uncertain futures. Geothermal energy uses remarkably similar technology and skills. Drilling a geothermal well differs from drilling an oil well primarily in the temperatures involved and the fact that you're producing heat rather than hydrocarbons. The core skills, operating drilling rigs, managing boreholes, monitoring reservoir pressure, are directly transferable. This means geothermal energy could provide a just transition for fossil fuel workers. Instead of seeing their skills become obsolete, they could move to an expanding industry that needs their expertise. Iceland is already seeing this dynamic, with drilling companies moving between geothermal and conventional projects. The economics also favor geothermal development. While drilling costs are high, a supercritical geothermal well might cost 15 to 30 million dollars, there are no fuel costs. Once a well is producing, electricity generation costs are among the lowest of any source. Over a 30-year lifespan, the economics are compelling. The new drilling campaign at Krofla aims to succeed where IDDP-1 stumbled. The well will be drilled deliberately into the magma chamber with equipment specifically designed for extreme conditions. Scientists will install sensors to measure temperature, pressure, gas composition, and seismic activity in real time. The data collected will be invaluable. 
no one has ever directly measured conditions inside an active magma chamber. Current understanding comes from indirect evidence, seismic waves, volcanic emissions, laboratory experiments on rock samples. Direct measurements will test and refine theories about how magma chambers behave, how they connect to deeper magma sources, and what triggers eruptions. From an energy standpoint, the goal is to demonstrate that supercritical geothermal wells can be drilled safely and operated reliably. If successful, Iceland plans to drill additional supercritical wells, potentially meeting much of the country's electricity needs from just a few sites. The project will also develop best practices for managing the unique challenges of extreme geothermal conditions, managing corrosive supercritical fluids, preventing mineral precipitation that can clog wells, maintaining equipment in harsh environments, and monitoring for any signs of induced seismic activity. Iceland is the proving ground, but the vision extends globally. Japan has launched its own supercritical geothermal research program. Italy is exploring enhanced geothermal systems near volcanic regions. The United States has funded research into drilling techniques for extreme temperatures. Even countries without obvious volcanic resources are watching closely. Enhanced geothermal systems, EGS, where water is injected into hot dry rock to create artificial reservoirs, could potentially be developed at supercritical conditions. This would require drilling 5 to 10 kilometers deep in non-volcanic areas, presenting enormous challenges, but would open geothermal resources to vast new regions. China provides an intriguing parallel. Chinese engineers recently completed one of the world's deepest boreholes, drilling over 10,000 meters into the Earth's crust. While officially for scientific research, the project also explores deep geothermal potential. China's vast territory includes limited accessible geothermal resources using conventional technology, but ultra-deep drilling could change that calculation. The Iceland Deep Drilling Project represents a convergence of scientific curiosity and practical need. Understanding magma chambers better could improve volcano monitoring and eruption prediction, potentially saving lives. The countdown to 2026 has begun. Soon we'll know whether this audacious plan to drill into an active volcano will open a new chapter in clean energy, or remain an ambitious dream that proved too difficult to realize.